How secure is your life? Financial turbulence and global economic problems stalk your world. With rising food and energy troubles, many, if not most of us, have been negatively affected. What about your personal situation? Is it safe and sound? Or do you feel insecure? Can you survive whatever perils may come your way? What or who will be your anchor? Stay tuned to Beyond Today as we consider what is real security? Join our host, Steve Myers, and his guests as they help you understand your future on Beyond Today. How secure is your world? Phrases like nine meals from anarchy are no longer casually dismissed as apocalyptic nonsense. Consider this. What if the flow of oil was suddenly and significantly blocked? What if truck and rail transportation were severely restricted by major fuel shortages? The result? Imagine food beginning to disappear from supermarket shelves. Now, is that out of the question? If you're honest, you know that we're in trouble. What we don't know is how bad it may become. Is it merely a temporary economic crisis or one that will lead directly to the fulfillment of major biblical prophecies? Author Paul Roberts stated in USA Today, global demand for food is soaring, yet arable land and water are becoming scarce. Fertilizer costs are rising, and then there are the climate swings. So what's the world to do? That's a very good question. What is the world to do? Do you realize how much pressure rising standards of living and population growth in countries like China, India, and Brazil are putting on precious food supplies? Professor Roberts continues, most of the world's readily farmable acres are already in crops. In fact, the world is actively losing farmland. Even in the USA, the inexorable spread of suburbs, malls, and golf courses costs us dearly. Now you may think, yes, but we're resilient. What we've done in the past, that'll fix things once again. And certainly, no doubt, we are resourceful human beings. Yet, the crisis over natural resources most likely is just beginning. Now here's a question you should ask yourself. How bad will it become? Here's an example to think about. A few years ago there was a town in Florida that wanted to increase tourism. So they decided in order to put themselves on the map that they would build the world's largest sandcastle. So what did they do? They assembled a group of professionals, thousands of volunteers. They spent tens of thousands of dollars. Guess what happened? The sandcastle did achieve world-renowned status. They made it into the Guinness Book of World Record. Now, hundreds of hours of labor, dump trucks full of sand, bulldozers, backhoes, all of that. And guess where that sandcastle is today? It's gone. It wasn't lasting. It was built on the wrong foundation. It was built on the sand. And you know what? This world is built on the wrong foundation. Is there any doubt that the world around you is insecure? In just this last year, how much has your life, your finances, your perspective changed? A feature article in Time Magazine predicted the 21st century will overturn many of our basic assumptions about economic life. And now, I think we've seen this already just a little bit, but the article went on to say, in some locations, Societies have outstripped the carrying capacity of the land, resulting in chronic hunger and large-scale exodus of desperate populations. Now, that couldn't happen to us. Not here, could it? Keep in mind how connected and how crowded our planet is. And that means massive problems can spread quickly. Our modern civilization is becoming increasingly vulnerable. Now what about your personal peace, your personal prosperity? Many believe the hour is getting late and that the peace and the prosperity that we Western nations have enjoyed may be coming to a quick end. There was an insightful article in the tablet and it said, changes in the distribution of economic activity across the world will change the balance of political and military power. That's a chilling prediction. We know that economic power can multiply into political and then to military power as well. Because there is no doubt we live in an insecure world. 
We live in a world of economic uncertainty, inflation, taxes, worries about failing Medicare and Social Security, business closings, government takeovers. It is a scary place. It's also a world of political uncertainty. The international tensions that are going up and down, it seems almost daily, government corruption, scandals that we hear about all the time. It is a world of uncertainty, disease, accidents, terrorism. You see, it all points to the fact that ultimately, we live in a world of spiritual uncertainty. You know, with all this bad news, what kind of security can you look forward to? Well, almost 2,000 years ago, a prophet that you've heard of came bringing a vital message for this world. That prophet was Jesus Christ, and his message was the gospel of the kingdom of God. The word gospel means good news. But what was the good news that Jesus Christ brought? What is the kingdom which he spoke about? And what does it have to do with the problems that threaten your world today? Well, we have a booklet. It's a free booklet to help you understand your future. It's called The Gospel of the Kingdom. And it will help you understand where to find real security. Now, you can get this free booklet by going online to beyondtoday.tv. You can download it, you can read it online, or order your free copy, The Gospel of the Kingdom. Now, most don't understand the truth about the kingdom of God, and yet it's a central theme of your Bible. And truly, it has the best news for your life. The Gospel of the Kingdom, it will help you to discover the surprising message that Jesus Christ brought. It's a free booklet, absolutely free, and it will show you from the pages of your Bible exactly what that message was and what it means for you. So request your free copy today. You can click or you can call. Toll free, 1-888-888-8632. That's 1-888-886-8632. Or go online to beyondtoday.tv. This booklet will help you to understand. If you want answers, you can start by receiving this critical information in order to help you. So get your free booklet today. Now, do you believe that the answers to your security problems are found perhaps in the United Nations? Or how about our political system? Do you have confidence in your governmental leaders? A new Rasmussen Reports National Telephone Survey finds that 57% of us would vote to replace the entire U.S. Congress and start all over again. Now imagine that, 57% of us. Replace the whole lot of them. Now, it also found that only 16% believe that it's very likely that Congress will address the most important problems facing our nation today. Now, that means 84% of us don't think they're going to talk about the important things. And you know, it's not just us. It's not just U.S. leaders that are unpopular. In Britain, Melanie Phillips reported that the stench is becoming overpowering. Political sleaze scandals are a symptom of decay, and it's not just for a beleaguered prime minister, but for democracy itself. That's in trouble. You see, never has the need for strong leadership become more necessary, and yet harder to find. So where does this leave you? Where does it leave your family? How can you personally cope? In what or whom should you trust? What is your anchor? Since political leaders don't have the answers, what do most people think? Well, most people think money will be their security. Now, here's the proof. This year, MetLife did a study. It was called the MetLife Study of the American Dream. You know what they found? 66% of Americans define the American Dream as financial security. That's two-thirds of us. Now, different than past years, it used to be that religion, community, charity, all kind of factored into the whole dream. But now, it's clearly focused on self and on money. Now, is that where your security lies? Does it lie in self or in your money? Now, here's an interesting quote. Famous oil man John D. Rockefeller said, I have made many millions, but they've brought me no happiness. I would trade them all for the days I sat on an office stool in Cleveland and counted myself rich on $3 a week. Andrew Carnegie, the multimillionaire, said, Millionaires seldom smile. So, is money really security? 
I mean, we've all seen the turbulence in the stock market most recently. In fact, many years ago, my wife and I tried to open a, an IRA. Now, in order to open an IRA, you needed a minimum of $2,000. So we scrimped and we saved and we penny pitched. We did everything we could to try to put away some money for the future. And of course, it's good to plan for the future. It's good to save for days to come. And so finally, ultimately, we got enough. We, we got that $2,000. We put it in an IRA. You know what happened just a couple of short months after that? 9-11. 9-11 happened, and within months, that $2,000 we saved had went down all the way to about 600 The investment was gone. Now, we couldn't really take it out of there, and so we just left it in there and kind of forgot about it for a while. And slowly, that investment began to build, and it built up, and it built, until just a while ago, it was all the way back up to that $2,000 again. And then you know what happened next. Next, we came to the economic crisis, 2008. All of a sudden, boom, that thing plunged all the way back down to that $600 level or so. What a reminder. Is that where we find our security? Is it only in our investments, in our financial security? I mean, what is your best investment? It kind of depends on where you find real security, what you trust. Do you trust money or someone that can really make a difference in your life? That's God. The best investment advice comes from your Bible. Over in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus Christ himself said, Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust, maybe we could add inflation or recession or economic crisis, where none of that destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So where is your heart? How secure is your future? Now, there's a prophet in the Bible who has an odd name. His name is Habakkuk. And he gives an interesting perspective on your future. Over in Habakkuk chapter 2, right at the very beginning of that chapter, he says something interesting. He focuses on what we have to think about. Notice what he says. He says, I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I'm corrected. Now, did you notice? He was actively seeking God's help. And with his troubles, with his worries, he was willing to change his personal conduct, his actions, his own actions. So what about you? Where do you look for help? Are you willing to change? Here, continuing on. He says, The Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on the tablets, that he may run who reads it. Now, that doesn't mean he will run away. It means he who reads it will act swiftly. He'll do something about it. Because he goes on, For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come. And that time has surely come. This passage applies today. God reminds you what he's predicted for the future will undoubtedly come to pass. That's not in question. Did you know that Jesus Christ himself said these are the days, today he was talking about, that all these things that are written in the Old Testament will be fulfilled. And we're on the verge of those things. I mean, think about it. Look around the world today. How long can this world continue on this downward spiral? Now back to verse 4 in Habakkuk. It says God will reveal something very critical to us. In fact, it's a major spiritual key in finding real security. He tells us how to cope with personal crisis as well as the coming world crisis. Notice what he says. Behold, the proud. He says his soul is not upright in him. He says, but the just shall live by his faith. You see, God requires humility as we learn to live by faith. Arrogant and foolish pride will get us nowhere. Self-reliance won't help. We're told to live by faith. It's not just a matter of having faith, but exercising this crucial spiritual quality to help bring you through difficult and dangerous times. Your security is found through faith in the God of the Bible. Now, is that the kind of faith that you have? Or perhaps you're like some people. Jesus Christ himself describes certain people. Are you one of them? Look at Luke chapter 21, verse 34. Christ said, Take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and the cares of this life. 
And boy, the cares of this life can certainly weigh us all down. There's so many things to be worried about, to be insecure about. But Christ says, don't be weighed down with those things that that day come on you unexpectedly. For it will come as a snare on those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. You see, that's a personal and a global prediction, an end time prophecy that you should listen to us. He says, watch out. Watch out, watch therefore. A little bit lower, verse 36. He says, watch and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. You see, make no mistake. Traumatic, tragic events will come. They will test your faith. So what can you do? Don't be fooled. Don't become complacent. Don't overlook the obvious. You see, if you look back to the Middle Ages, there was a reminder back then. Some of the monks during the Middle Ages had a reminder. You know what it was? Some of them had a skull on their desk. And that skull, it's kind of morbid, but you know, that skull was a reminder for them. And on that skull, there was an inscription. And do you know what it said? It said, sumus moribundus. You know what that meant? In Latin, it meant destined to die. And they kept that skull there on their desk as a reminder, a reminder that life is temporary. It's certain to end. Security is not found in the things of this world. This world is not what it's all about. And that skull helped them to gain the right perspective and to focus on the reality of what life is really all about. What's most important? Now, as you think about that example, the skull is on the desk of this world. Will you ignore it? Set your sights on the only one who can give you true security. Get to know the true God and His way of life. Put your priorities in the right order. Even if you're facing terribly difficult or despairing circumstances, remember that God's promises are sure. Even if we're confronted by life's darkest storms, He tells us in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 33. Notice what He says. He says, Whoever listens to me will dwell safely and will be secure without fear of evil. There's so much more to discuss on this topic. So don't go away. How can you maintain your security? Up next, we're going to talk about that. We'll be talking with the Beyond Today panel. So stay with us. The promises of a new existence will change every human being who understands and acts. You can enter what Jesus described as the mystery of the kingdom of God. Call 1-888-886-8632 or go to beyondtoday.tv for your free copy of The Gospel of the Kingdom. Discover what it is and what it will be like. While the news about the Middle East seems to get worse, you can get understanding of where it's going in your free subscription to The Good News magazine. See why Jerusalem will remain at the center of the news in articles that regularly keep you up to date in the direction of our world. Call toll-free 1-888-886-8632. That's 1-888-886-8632. Or go to beyondtoday.tv for your free subscription to The Good News magazine. You can order a free subscription to The Good News magazine. It's a magazine of understanding, one that will help you to understand some of the world conditions that we've been talking about today. Many different types of articles that will help you to understand not only the world around you, but how to deal with your family. What's a better way to deal with your surroundings? What's the best way? What does God have to say? This is a magazine that will help you with your life. So we hope you'll order your free year's subscription to Good News magazine. You can do that online and do it right after the program. Now, we've been talking about security. It's what is real security. Now, we're going to talk about this with our fellow hosts, both uh, Darius McNeely and Gary Petty. They've joined me today. And as we talk about security, why has it become such a big issue? It seems to be in all the headlines when you hear about all the events that have been going on most recently. Why, why has it become that way? Security is always an issue. With, with us human beings, we need to be able to feel secure in our lives. The problem is, We can't control everything. No matter what you do, you can't control everything. I recently bought a used car, and I got it certified, and I got it guaranteed, and it was never going to break down. And three weeks after I bought it, I'm driving down the road, and a piece of metal flies off a car in front of me and does thousands of dollars worth of damage. I couldn't control 
everything. That's why we have to go back to understanding who God is and that God is our ultimate security in this life and in the future life. Well, in the last eight to nine years, we've had a number of issues that have really brought this issue of security to the forefront. We had 9-11 and the terrorist threat Mm -hmm. that has been an ongoing issue that despite people not talking about it so much or even changing the terminology, it's still a a very real problem. Well, we were going to be able to solve all those things. In our world, we tried to uh, by invading certain countries and trying to contain it, but it's still there. Uh, In September of 08, we had as well a major financial meltdown on the world markets and the world went into a tailspin. One third of people's wealth was wiped off the the books. And when people who are beginning to retire, we have this uh, large mass of people called baby boomers that are have moved into the retirement mode of life. And when people who are relying on pensions, they're relying on IRAs, uh, as you mentioned, Steve, uh, 401k uh, pension plans. And when those Uh, begin to evaporate. One third of the value beginning to be lopped off and major corporations going into bankruptcy and pension plans on the outs, Social Security and Medicare and all the other social structures that have been put in place beginning to be threatened and people wondering about it. Uh, Security then really becomes a very, very uh, front page, big headline issue that affects every day of our life and especially our future Will there be a future? Some people are wondering. Yeah, I think you know it's really bumped into the headlines because you can't read the newspaper without seeing something about Social Security because now the, the whole system's in trouble. Or there's Homeland Security, another aspect of that. Or we get our home security systems that somehow are going to protect us from, from the world around us. And so that issue is right there. But, but I think it, it exposes the issue in a sense that that's not where the solution is. It's, it's not in Homeland Security. It's not in Social Security. It's not in you know the bars that we put around our homes. But it it makes the point that we need real security. So what is real security when you really get down to the basics? When it comes down to basic human security, what we're really talking about is why were you born and what's the purpose of your life? And that comes down to the understanding and the acceptance that there is a creator God. He created you and a purpose for your life. And that in following that purpose and following God, even as... Bad things happen even as you grow older, even as you face death. There is a hope in the future and there is a security because God is your ultimate security. There's a story from the Bible of God dealing with His people uh, back in in ancient Israel. And He he, he coined a phrase that that, uh, Jesus also picked up on and and altered somewhat. But the the people had put their trust in themselves or they had put their trust in a, a human government and not in God not in God, God's work, and not in what God had called them to do, uh, their understanding of who they were as a people. And God said to them, look, you put your money into bags with holes in it. And you read that in the first chapter of the book of Haggai, uh, one of the minor prophets. And you read that and you have a perfect description of our times, people putting money into bags with holes in it, just as you did with your IRA. Mm-hmm. Now, time and cyclical economic structures can bring some of that back and we hope that it does and that doesn't obviate or deal, do away with uh, saving mm-hmm. prudent fiscal management right. but as Gary was saying it is important that we put our trust confidence real security into the knowledge of God's purpose his plan for us understanding why we were born putting our trust in those promises and doing all the other things that we should do that God says we should do in terms of being a responsible human being wherever we live, but recognizing that our ultimate trust is in God, in His purpose, and in His plan, that's the foundation that will not be rocked regardless of what takes place. But our anchor has to be there. Yeah, I I think it brings home the point that we're talking about a spiritual issue. We miss the boat and we don't have the anchor if, if we don't understand that it's a spiritual element. The spiritual element is missing. We, we think the financials are going to save us or the government's going to save us or somebody's going to come along and, and work all these things out when in actuality we're missing the spiritual side of, of what's most important. And, and I think that bears out the point that, all right, what do we do about it? If we want to attain real security and we understand there's this missing spiritual element in our lives, what do we do? How do we deal with that then? Let me take your Bible here, Steve. And let's, let's look here what Jesus was talking about when he says, here in Matthew chapter 6, he says, Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? 
For after all these things, he says, this is what all people look for. This is the, the driving need for security in life. He says, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. This is the foundation of our faith, that God knows this. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. We have to believe and put our trust first in God, and then God will help us find the needs of life. Yeah, I think that's, that's the difficult thing. That's the missing spiritual element that people don't turn to. But if we seek first, put that first in our lives, he says he's going to supply our needs, not, not necessarily all the things we want, but our needs will be fulfilled. And that means there's something that we have to do. We have to be about doing God's business and making that an important priority in our life. I mean, it used to be in our country, it was in God we trust. And now there's a movement to take that off of our currency. Well, because we don't trust in God and we're missing that element. Yeah, it, it comes down to what we're talking about here in the booklet that you're offering today on the gospel of the kingdom of God and anchoring your life in the reality of that, that knowledge, that understanding of what God is going to bring to this earth and understanding that our lives today are a preparation for that world that is to come. Uh, that's what God has called us for. That's, that's God's purpose with us. If we can grasp that and begin to live our lives according to those principles today, then what comes beyond today is something we will be prepared for and be able to have that place serving God with God in that particular kingdom, in that plan. But we've got to come to understand that and anchor our life in it. Yeah, because beyond today, there is good news. It's not just all bad. There is security. God wants us to find security. Hebrews talks about that fact. The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. So real security, it's something that we can attain. It does matter. It matters to God and it should matter to you as well. You can find real security in a relationship with your father. Stay with us. We'll be right back. The promises of a new existence will change every human being who understands and acts. You can enter what Jesus described as the mystery of the kingdom of God. Call 1-888-886-8632 or go to beyondtoday.tv for your free copy of The Gospel of the Kingdom. Discover what it is and what it will be like. Do you long for real, lasting security? It can only be found by developing a right relationship with the God of your Bible. It's time to invest in spiritual security. You can choose to be in God's safekeeping by living the way He says you should live. So don't put your life at risk. You can limit the liability by no longer living the way that ignores God's teachings. Seek out divine security. Develop your relationship with your Creator. No matter how unstable the world is around you, it is possible for you to have confidence and assurance. There's a merciful God who loves you, and He wants you to put your faith in Him. Now's the time to dedicate yourself to finding real security, the spiritual security that's only found in obedience to God. That's our program for today. I'm Steve Myers. Be sure to join us next time here on Beyond Today. Thanks for watching. For the free literature offered on today's program, go online to beyondtoday.tv. Please join us again next week on Beyond Today.